All right. Well, I want to finish up with uh, artificial intelligence today, AIs. Uh, the last of the topics is uh, the NAB mesh. Let me get a share screen going here. So uh, what, the NAB mesh is a pretty cool tool that provides uh, a way to have your AIs navigate on the landscape. That is not just a flat plane with no obstacles, but they'll, they'll be able to figure out how to get from one point to another on a terrain where there are certain parts of the terrain that are uh, uh, not accessible to them because it's too steep or because they're walls or whatever. And they'll find the shortest distance between any two points staying on the nav mesh. Um, uh, it, it also allows uh, uh, for non-stationary obstacles, obstacle or doors that can open and close and uh, let, let the uh, character through. Uh, and nav meshes are really pretty easy to use, but there are, of course, uh, gotchas. So um, the first step of using a nav mesh is to generate a nav mesh. Um, uh, we'll, um, we need to open the navigation view. Uh, the navigation view is one of the pull downs that we get from our window here the, under, uh, under AI navigation. And so this is the navigation view. And I've already baked a nav mesh on it, and it's showing here with the different colors that indicate uh, various things that we'll talk about as we go along here. Um, the the uh, navigation view has these four tabs, agents, uh, which doesn't really do anything unless you download these extra tools, the advanced nav mesh API uh, indicated below here. Um, but it has areas, bake, and objects. Objects is where we select the things in the scene that we want to participate in the nav mesh. Uh, uh, we have uh, a choice here of everything, uh, mesh renders or terrains. Um, I only have a bunch of planes in here. These are nav mesh renders. So they all show up when I click the uh, mesh renders, there are no terrain, so nothing shows up there. Or I can select everything in the scene. Uh, uh, here, I'll probably pick the uh, uh, mesh renders. Um, once we've selected everything that we want to navigate on, uh, we need to check them to be nav mesh navigation static. Um, there's also an option for an off mesh link. Um, uh, that's an advanced feature. We'll talk about that some other time. Um, but um, the, uh, in the bake here, um, we have these uh, off mesh links. We're not going to pay any attention to that. Um, we have uh, uh, for areas, we have different uh, costs of moving across these areas. Uh, by default, we get a not walkable, which is an area that the agent cannot go. We get walkable that has a cost of one, and we get jumping that has a cost of two. And we have a whole bunch of other user definable uh, costs that we can name and then uh, assign different costs to. Um, the cost of a path uh, is used in the nav mesh calculation to figure out how to get from here to there. Uh, it will, in general, find a path that minimizes the cost. So it'll add up the cost of crossing all the different areas. And if there's one area that has a particularly high cost, it would choose a longer path through a lower cost area to get there. 
Um, so this gives us a lot of control over uh, designing our world for our characters. Uh, you, you can uh, make a, a character favor a particular route that goes over easier ground, but uh, they might, they would be willing to detour through a higher cost area uh, to avoid a long trip around on the easier terrain. Um, if you're designing it uh, to, to model the risk, uh, uh, you might have areas that your characters want to stay away from because there are bad things in that area, thieves or snakes or whatever. Um, uh, stealth characters might uh, want to avoid uh, cameras and guard patrol routes, so you would provide them with an easier path that avoided these dangerous areas. Uh, uh, attack forces might uh, want to stay close to walls uh, or uh, 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 staying under cover, or you might just be making like damage areas, areas where there's fire or electrified floors or pools of acid or lava or whatever. Uh, and these would normally be avoided, but uh, uh, if there were no other way, or it was shorter, less costly to cross the lava lake to get to some place, that might happen. So the bake tab is uh, where we uh, we bake it. This is similar to baking lighting. Uh, we uh, this is a pre-computed thing that is done uh, 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 before the game is running. Uh, and there are a number of different settings on the bake. How big our character is, its, it's radius, how big a step it can step up over, and how steep a slope it can navigate. Uh, and uh, uh, these all uh, uh, affect what area will be uh, deemed walkable by the nav mesh. Um, the, um, um, once you've got those set appropriately, uh, you can just press the bake button and uh, it will bake it and uh, you can see this, you can see the result of your baking in the scene view and you can also see it in the game view if you have gizmos turned on and the nav mesh uh, agent selected. If we have other objects, I, I think it might disappear if, if this is selected. If we're in the inspector, it goes away. So um, the nav mesh is colored. Uh, they're walkable and unwalkable areas. Uh, here in this case, the uh, uh, it can't go near the edge. Uh, that's an unwalkable area, uh, uh, but it can go up the center region that's considered to be walkable. So let me just run this so that you can see this thing in action. Uh, it has a destination that's somewhere up the ramp that it has to go to. It's got a path. It's uh, uh, navigating amongst these nav mesh static objects. Uh, it's, uh, that's a nav mesh obstacle. It uh, goes up the ramp, uh, makes a laborious turn, and heads up to its destination, this target object that it's going to. Um, so the, um, to, to set this up, we have to, of course, make a character that is equipped to use the nav mesh. And this is done by putting a nav mesh agent component on the character that we want it to move. Um, nav mesh is very simple, as simple as setting the desired destination point, a vector three position in the world or a transform. Uh, and the nav mesh agent handles everything from there on in. Uh, so, uh, to our character, we need to add a nav mesh uh, agent. Here's our nav mesh agent. Here's our nav mesh agent that has the nav mesh agent component attached to it. 
Uh, and there are a number of different obstacle or uh, options here that we'll talk about, one of which is humanoid. That's the kind of character that we're using here. Um, so uh, having added that, uh, the, uh, the properties include the, uh, the uh, agent's radius, uh, 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 the uh, well, we define the radius and height in the, in the, uh, the bake options, um, but the radius is how wide the agent is, as in the height is how high a ceiling it can pass underneath. Uh, so you could have low hanging branches and so forth that would prevent a character from walking under that area. Um, the, uh, often when we're setting up characters, the uh, game object's anchor point doesn't uh, neatly match with the base of the cylinder, the upright cylinder uh, that is the agent. Uh, uh, and that cylinder is the thing that moves our character around. That's the thing that follows the nav mesh path. Uh, and we want that cylinder's bottom to as closely approximate the bottom, the anchor point of our character. And, and there's an offset, a base offset here that we can use to adjust that. Now the path calculated is a sequence of waypoints, not unlike the waypoints that we uh, had before. Um, they're technically connected by a straight line uh, that denotes the shortest path, but um, um, the path that it will follow will not be a scrupulous straight line path because we get to specify the speed that the nav mesh agent uh, travels, the acceleration, which is basically how fast it gets up to speed, and the angular speed, which is how fast it turns. So you saw when we played this little thing, it sometimes had some difficulty getting through some of the different uh, uh, areas here because it could only turn uh, a, a certain rapidity uh, and it accelerates at a certain speed and uh, it takes it a while to get through these different obstacles. Um, the agent has this gradual acceleration set by the acceleration and it has a limit on its turn rate. And it also doesn't stop precisely on the target point. So in many cases, because it can't turn fast enough, it will overshoot the target, turn around, try and reach it again from the other side. And this ends up with the thing kind of orbiting around uh, uh, the uh, target point. Um, um, to handle this, we have something called a stopping distance and an auto braking property. Uh, with the stopping distance, once the agent gets within that distance of the target, it assumes that it's reached its destination. This is similar to the proximity that we define in our uh, uh, waypoint situation. Uh, with auto braking on, the agent will slow down automatically as it gets close to its target. Uh, this lets it uh, turn in a tighter circle, and so it uh, is less likely to orbit. Um, as, as it moves around, it avoids fixed obstacles as well as other agents, uh, and it has a, a, a quality setting uh, that uh, gives it a, a hint to the navigation system how accurately uh, to avoid things, uh, low quality, uh, may sometimes allow the uh, character to move outside the nav mesh, uh, but of course, as with anything good, uh, higher quality uh, takes more computer cycles. Um, the avoidance priority determines how the agent uh, interacts with other agents. Uh, the agent with the larger priority number yields to the other one, uh, 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 the, the those with lower priority numbers kind of have uh, right of way. I think I might have told you that with the waypoint, uh, and, and that's not correct. I don't think the waypoint actually does that. Uh, so a, a script to set this up, how, how simple this is. Here's our Pathfinder script. We've got a game object that has a, that's going to be our destination. We'll set this in the exposed variable. 
uh, we've got a private uh, nav mesh agent. Incidentally, you need to include unityengine.ai if you're going to use a nav mesh agent, AI. Uh, and in start, we're getting the nav mesh agent and we're setting the destination. And the update, is, uh, we wouldn't actually need an update if the destination doesn't move. But if the destination happens to be something that it's chasing, then we'd have to update its destination uh, in basically every frame to keep it uh, tracking the uh, moving destination. So it's that simple. There's nothing more to it than that. Uh, this target point is a vector three point in the world. Uh, the navigation system will find the closest point on the nav mesh. Uh, so the target does not even have to be on the nav mesh. It will go to the edge of the nav mesh closest to that target and kind of stall there. Um, uh, how you choose the target depends on uh, the nature of your game. Uh, you might want to have an N NPC track the player uh, to start an attack. Uh, you might have the character moving to a preset target, uh, an empty game object that's the exit or the location of treasure, or uh, as one of the advanced projects uh, uh, move to a, a location on the map clicked on by a mouse. Um, so here's, a, here's a, a path by mouse. So uh, we've got a camera uh, from which we want to cast a ray. This might be the overhead camera or it might be uh, your first person camera. Uh, and we have again this private nav mesh agent. And again, we've included Unity Engine AI. In start, we uh, cache the nav mesh agent. And in update, uh, if the mouse button zero is down, we cast a ray from the camera out to the mouse position. If it's hit something uh, uh, within 100 meters of the uh, 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 camera point of view, we set the agent's destination to that hit point. And so now we have a mechanism for uh, uh, casting uh, hit points, uh, casting destinations out into our world. Um, uh, we also have, we, we saw static obstacles. We had some examples of static obstacles here in the, uh, uh, here in the scene. We had these cubes that were marked nav mesh static in order to have them carve out a position. We also have a nav mesh obstacle, uh, a nav mesh obstacle. Uh, is something that can move. Let me actually go to a scene with a nav mesh obstacle in it. It's working. Uh, so here's our, our obstacle. Uh, it has on it a nav mesh obstacle script. Uh, and uh, it's going to carve out a, uh, an area around it that is uh, not navigable. Um, I think this is supposed to be set to carve, carve only stationary. No, we want, in order for it to uh, make a dynamically changing nav mesh, we want to have this carve setting. So let me, uh, I'll just watch this area here as the, the, our little character uh, tries to navigate past it. And I believe I put an animation on this thing so that it's going to move around a little bit and alternately block the path uh, of my character. So you can see that the nav mesh is dynamically updating uh, what region is walkable. I almost made it through there, had to go back around the other way. Uh, there's another obstacle that blocked it and it's on its way up uh, the ramp to its destination uh, where it's going to stop when it gets to it. So that's the idea behind an obstacle. Um, here's a, here's a, a point and click world. Uh, I've got uh, a top down map here that I can click on. Uh, that's the camera that I've included in the script and I can put different places and it will uh, travel to those different places. Uh, it'll adapt 
to the changing nav mesh as those two dynamic obstacles uh, try and keep it out. Uh, it can get pretty frustrated. Oh, almost made it. Uh, 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 not quite. Oh, it didn't make it again. There, it finally got through. Okay. So uh, 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 the uh, obstacles are pretty cool in terms of setting up dynamic situations that would prevent your character from crossing those things. Um, uh, by the way, these obstacles should not be tagged nav mesh static as they're going to move. And as I mentioned, the carve property needs to be checked. So uh, in both Pathfinder and Path by Mouse, uh, we did nothing to move the character. It was done by the nav mesh agent component. Movement was controlled by the exposed variable speed, how fast it can go, its angular speed, how fast it can turn, and acceleration, how fast it can get up to speed and also slow down. Um, with um, uh, more complex characters, things can get uh, Quite a bit more complicated, uh, but I can We did take. We can take advantage of our idle chase jump controller, and a slightly modified version of the target following AI script uh, that we developed. Uh, so here's uh, um, well. Uh, let me just show you this example before I do that. Here's here's a terrain. Where's the terrain? Here's the terrain, um, and I've, I it, this is a, a terrain with steep valleys and hills and so forth, and uh, the the slope setting was set to uh, 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 30 degrees. So any place that's steeper than 30 degrees, it made an unwalkable nav mesh. Uh, so it kind of confines itself to these valleys and uh, uh, troughs here. Uh, this little nav mesh agent is just like the one I just showed you, and it's going to uh, navigate its way to its uh, uh, target that is somewhere across the grid. Uh, it takes it a while to get through this little narrow region, uh, but it's following its nav mesh. Let me pause this for a second. And minimize this and set nav mesh so that I can see the nav mesh that it's following here. Uh, you, can, you can only see this when it's uh, actually, in, incidentally, that thing in front of it was it, its brain thinking. Uh, as it found its way through here. So with um, Mechanim, um, here now I have, I have an AI character, uh, the dude, and uh, I believe I can, uh, I'm somewhere here in the mesh. Um, my character is here. And uh, the AI is on his way to try and find me. I'll get down in the canyon here. Uh, I'm the green dot. Uh, the, um, the AI is the blue dot that's following that path. Uh, and at some point, where is he? At some point, I don't know what direction he's coming from. There he is. Where, 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 where? There he is. So he finds me, and when he gets close enough, he jumps. Um, I, I did put a little ball there. Uh, that's the path that that, uh, that character is following. So um, how did we do that? Um, well, first of all, uh, since the terrain is so jagged, I, didn't, I disabled the can see function. I did this. Uh, by putting a, uh, if the C distance is zero, then the can C just returns true. If the can if C distance is greater than zero, it'll go through its usual logic. <coughs> I also don't want it to uh, 
um, uh, uh, navigate while it's jumping or idle. Uh, and so uh, I can stop the nav mesh agent. Uh, agent is stopped, is set equal to true, turns off the nav mesh agent. And then in the chase, uh, uh, I check to see if it's stopped. And if it is stopped, it's false, set to false. Uh, and then I ask the agent to reset its path. It, this calculates a new path to its target. Uh, and I'm keeping uh, the position of my uh, of, of my character that it's targeting, uh, plus some distance in front, the usual thing, so it doesn't come too close to my character, and I set the agent to that destination. Um, uh, the uh, nav mesh agent handles the movement, uh, but of course, uh, uh, um, uh, there, there is some stuff in here about uh, uh, setting its animation so that it's, it's uh, doing the right animation while it's going. That's that little steering target that I put out in front of it. Um, the steering target are put on points at the edge of the nav mesh triangles that define the path. Uh, that nav mesh is all a whole bunch of triangles and uh, uh, the path is edges of those triangles that connect the shortest distance uh, and uh, I put the target there. We can also use that to show the, uh, the path that we're following here. So uh, uh, here now I have, this is a click by, uh, uh, a move by clicking. Uh, so I can click a point in the, in the, I can click a point here and uh, it goes to that particular point and then does its little jumping. Uh, there should be a path that it's following. Uh, the path is the connection of all the different corners that uh, lead it to that uh, path. And it, it's, it's finding its way through the world to get to the different things. And if I click this, it resets its path and heads back the other way. Uh, and so this is the kind of thing that we can do with this. So um, um, uh, incidentally, uh, oh, this is, this is the script for that uh, line. That's an object with a line render on it. Uh, I, I, I uh, start this coroutine updater. Uh, I've got the agent's path which has corners, an array of, array of corners. Uh, and so I go through each of those and assign uh, those positions to the uh, line render. Actually, this one right here assigns the array of path corners to the array of positions. Here I'm just offsetting it so that it's up off the ground. And uh, it does this every so many seconds. So uh, that's a pretty quick blast through uh, the nav mesh. Uh, I'm gonna stop the share screen here uh, and uh, end the video and uh, this will be posted and you can see it in class or we'll talk about it in class. Uh, I'm gonna end the recording now. Bye, see you in class.